All right, guys, I'm going to try to keep this video short. I know I say that often, but legit, I will on this one. Seiko SBBN045, the tuna, the newer tuna, sapphire crystal, different handset, kind of a throwback to the originals. Marine Master, not on the dial. I know some people miss that. Eh, I don't really care. It's still 300 meter, still has the 7C46 movement in it that is exclusive to just the Seiko tuna lineup. Great, great quartz movement. If I can find an article on it, I'll link it down below, but don't necessarily go looking for it. You can probably Google it yourself. But on this guy, real quick, I wanted to get this video because I done the blue one when this one first came out, and now I have the opportunity to look at the black one. I figured I'd bust out a video real quick, see if anybody wants to uh, check it out a little bit closer detail. 47.6 millimeter case, and that's at the base. If you measure the bezel, it's only 40.8, so just under 41. So you can kind of see that flared look to the overall case shape. So yeah, the platform when it's on wrist, it is going to set down like it's 47 and a half. But from the top side, because it flares out, I don't know, it looks more like a 41. These wear deceptively small. The lug to lug is part of the reason. Lug to lug is only 44 and a half millimeter. Super stubby lugs there. Um, so that's the main reason. It's just round. Thickness, 14.3, uh, yeah, 14.3 millimeter. You're going to get the case back here and then the top of the bezel. The sapphire crystal is flat on the top and sits just below this bezel, which I believe is some sort of coated steel that Seiko does. It's, I don't think it's ceramic. They're known to do like um, a very high-grade coating that mimics ceramic uh, wearability, but on steel, and I think that's what this one is too. But you can see that distortion in the crystal. It is a single domed crystal but the dome is on the underside where traditionally domes are done on the on the top side kind of like that it's flat on top I, I like that look overall 22 millimeter lug width here these come on these factory seiko silicon straps not a big fan of the metal keeper but i can live with it these straps are comfortable now if you put this on a bracelet i really don't care for the factory seiko bracelet that's just me personally i know some people like it but I prefer the Hexed, so that is more angular and it does taper. So 22 down to, I forget what it tapers down to, 18 or something like that. Um, this one, when it was sent to me, it's used, was sent on this bracelet, which looked pretty good and wears pretty good on there. And this is from a Hamdollar, like uh, one of those um, AliExpress type watches or something. That's what this bracelet's from. So... I think basically it, there's going to be a lot of good looking bracelets on there. I just personally, when you're dealing with 22 millimeter, you're going to want some taper to it. So just think about that when you go to get the bracelet. I, it'll just, it'll be more comfortable. So 22, something with a taper and you're probably all set. Plus minus 15 seconds per month is what this movement's rated for. It has a five year battery life. And of course you do have your day and your date. If we zoom in, you can get a closer look at all this black on this thing and those oversized loom indices. There we go. Tons of real estate on that handset. You can see how sharp the tick is of the seconds hand, and it lines up really good. This is a high torque motor for this quartz movement on this thing. And of course you will have on the day, you'll have the Kenjay. Here, I'll just show you real quick. We can unscrew this. Pop it out one position. So there's the date. Here's the day. So you can see you have the symbols. And then if we scroll through, I think Saturday's blue and then Sunday will be red. Yep. So nice crown on this thing. It screws down nicely. I know some people have potentially had some issues with those. Uh, I haven't really had any issue with that. Oddly enough, and after this story, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it. Well, I'm going to do the wrist shot and I'll tell you the story. Oddly enough, out of all the watches I've had, the only movement that I had a legit failure or problem with was one of these 7C46s. It was a watch that was picked up through Nolman, and uh, I ended up getting it taken care of in the United States and I had to pay for a movement. So here it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. This is why so many people go for these watches, guys. They're accurate. They fit. They look great. They look, you know, tough, masculine. Um, incredible loom, uh, and then these newer ones with the sapphire crystal, you're not going to have any worries of scratching the hard lex on the old ones, you know, uh, where it 
prone to that issue. So, um, but overall, I think most people are having great luck with the 7C46 movement. So don't let my little quick story um, hinder your desire to own one of these. Incredible loom. In the Seiko lineup, legit, there's nothing better. The SKX, you know, the Turtles, uh, they all are slightly pale in comparison. Nothing outshines the Tuna out of all the watches that I've hand handled from Seiko. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next video.